Culture is too conser conservative. Mm. Uh, I, that's why I like Canada. <laughs> <laughs> But sometimes I miss Korea. So okay. maybe 50 50. 50 50. Thank you. I'm Sue. Um, I'm Canadian. And I love my culture. I love it because it yeah. accepts people from all over the place and there's lots of room for people to, to grow and change. and become whatever they want. I love I love Canadian culture. So it's Joe? Um I my name is Joe. Uh, I don't know how to describe myself in terms of culture and what kind of culture <laughs> I have. Um, so I was born and raised in Korea and I moved here when I was 19 years old so I guess uh, my, my own culture is Korean. And uh, Korean culture, hmm. very interesting culture, hard to describe. Um, <laughs> but I, I must say, I, I, I have so many things I don't like about my own culture. Mm. Yeah, so, so um, I have to say, uh, uh, no. And why? Hmm, really hard to say. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. But I do have a lot of aspects in me already. Mm. Yes, so it's really hard to change my own personality as well. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Mm. How are you? Uh, my name is Yohei. Uh, uh, I'm from Japan. Uh, I, I like Japanese culture because uh, Japanese people are polite, but sometimes I don't like because uh, Japanese people sometimes too strict about time or about... Mm. Mm. Yes, mm. so that's why yeah, I like But I don't know. Oh, I totally agree with his. <laughs> 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 okay. Long time or something. Okay. Hi, my name is Edwin. I'm from Korea. Yeah. I like my culture because I'm Korean. But uh, uh, Korean culture is too conservative, mm -hmm. so I don't like that part. But most of I like I like my culture. Okay. Thanks. My name is Jihye. Oh yeah. My name is Jihye. I like my culture. As he said, I love it. Anyway, I have to accept my culture. So I like. My name is Kim Min Lee. I'm from Korea. I like Korean culture, but some parts of. For example, music or clothes, traditional clothes and uh, art, but you know, uh, Korean culture is sometimes so strict to older, older uh, people, so yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I, I'm Yonggu. I love all, every country's culture. <laughs> Especially Canadian. Can oh, great. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, there are, you know, have 50 50 ideas, like negative, positive. 
Okay, let me introduce myself. I'm Takuya Ogura. Mm -hmm. I'm from Japan. I, yeah, I like Japanese culture, <laughs> especially food. Sometimes I miss the traditional food in Japan. Yes. So, uh, let's move on to today's topic. Today, I'd, I'd like to introduce about multiculturalism. First, uh, it includes which country has it, and the positive aspect and the negative point. Secondly, uh, we, will <coughs> we will know what is assimilation. Positive, uh, of course, positive points and the negative aspects. And we have to know deeply in situation in Canada, uh, no, situation in China. Third, let's share our opinions about these, co these concepts. Okay, so today, what is the goal today? Uh, <coughs> firstly, what is the best way to live in this society? Mm -hmm. Especially Canada, Korea, or Japan, mm -hmm. are all over the world. And secondly, uh, and of course, understanding multiculturalism. And thirdly, of course, understanding assimilation. And then we have to focus on this question. Which type of culture can make a peaceful society? I'd like to ask this question that at the end of this class. So please pay attention to my lecture and please listen carefully. But I don't want to say that answer. So just listen and just relax. What do you think about this picture when you see, mm -hmm. you know, this photograph? They look so happy. They look so happy. Because they are smiling. <laughs> <laughs> How about Luhei? Mm. <laughs> mm. mm. They look, look happy. Or? Okay. Okay. Anybody? Anybody else? No Asian. <laughs> definitely, definitely like Japan. Yeah. Neither Japan nor Korea. No one yes. Yeah. <laughs> or no, India. Oh, oh India. no India. Uh -huh. No Africa. No, Black right. American, yeah. Right, right. Can you distinguish? Features, yeah. Oh, I can't. <laughs> okay. So it is a I it is a concept of multiculturalism. So, can you explain, could you explain about multiculturalism briefly? Can you do that? Oh, let me, let me explain briefly. <coughs> multiculturalism is that a lot of people who had different nationalities and backgrounds and they get together in one country and live as equals in government laws. So, let me <coughs> let me summarize as as a one word. Multiculturalism equal diversity. So please uh, please remember this word while uh, at least while you are staying in Canada, please. So of course Canada has multiculturalism, also concept of multiculturalism. Canada has had multi uh, sorry. Canada has had multiculturalism since 1970s and then also Toronto has same concept as, as a government. So for your understanding, I'll show you one video. So please take a look at this.
Sorry. Could you give me the light? There should be a oh no audio jack in your computer. Good job. You should be looking around. Where do you put your speakers in? Oh here? Yeah. Is it? Are you listening? No, I don't, think, I don't think that's the oh. Oh. Hide? Mm -hmm. oh my god. You should know. <laughs> you should know. <laughs> <laughs> I should know. <laughs> you should know. Sorry. Is that right here? Uh, here? Oh, Justin? Okay, don't scratch. Yeah. Yeah. What did you try now? Yeah. Yeah. Now, the first thing that is a major shopping area. food shop, restaurant, jewelry store. You name it, you'll find it in Chinatown. Okay, that's what you want to Okay. That was a good dumpling house. Ah, uh, really? Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. I just thought of her. Toronto is well known as a multicultural city. It's been recognized worldwide, actually, for its multiculturalism. We have many, many ethnic groups living here, and uh, language is spoken, but basically everybody speaks English. Here we are in Koreatown, also known as Little Korea. There are over 50,000 people of Korean origin living in the Toronto area. The area is filled with shops, restaurants, and you find all kinds of excellent baked goods here. Now we are just west of the city center in Toronto's Chinatown. The Chinese population in Toronto is considerable, several hundred thousand. Chinatown in downtown Toronto is a major shopping area with all kinds of food shops, restaurants, jewelry stores, you name it, you'll find it in Chinatown. On a Sunday, this is where I come to get my dumplings. They take over 30 different kind of dumplings. Steam, fried. Normally we make take over 5,000 to 10,000 a day, seven days a week. When you take a holiday? No holiday. <laughs> what is your holiday? <laughs> my holiday? Oh, any time. <laughs> Here we are in the heart of Toronto's Little Italy. <coughs> this ethnic community got established early in the 1900s. There are several Italian business districts, but Little Italy is the oldest and the best established. If you want a great cup of coffee? Little Italy. If you want to enjoy a great glass of wine? Little Italy. Great soccer game on a patio? Little Italy. Well, Cecilia, South Cafe, part of Cecilia Esting, will be here for 50 years. I'll make a good ice cream. I think we're going to make it for another 50 years, maybe. <laughs> I think this is the best in Toronto. Yeah. You want to try some ice cream? Yeah, please. Thank you for <coughs> watching this video. The last restaurant is I strongly recommend for you to go there. It was so impressive for me because a lot of dessert. I think, who can explain about this restaurant? Uh, I've been there, and then the I've name? been there, and then they are well known for crepes, the mm. dessert, one of dessert, and then it's really big, big enough for I guess for two people, and uh, it was really sweet, and then there are a lot of things on crepe, made ice cream, uh, you can choose. So what is the name? Crepe. Oh, uh, I just know where it is <laughs> in Little Italy. <laughs> yes, in Little Italy. So, yeah, if you are interested in that place, do let me know after this, uh, taking this class. Mm. I'll show you the location. Okay. So, so for your, uh, for your understanding, so what is multiculturalism is? Also, what is the positive point of multiculturalism? So, <coughs> is there anyone else who has an idea of positive points of multiculturalism? They can keep their own culture. Yes, they can maintain their own culture. And they can feel they can be Canadian. 
and still be proud of the culture. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it is the most important point in multiculturalism. Thank you. So, oh, sorry about that. Firstly, uh, <coughs> if we are uh, in multiculturalism, concept of multiculturalism, we can expand our perspective smoothly in our daily lives. lives. For example, when, when we talk to people from other countries, they have a lot of ideas, a lot of, uh, a lot of also different uh, opinions. Also, we can improve our thoughts and our mind using this kind of like, con uh, comments or ideas. So <coughs> we can expand, we can spread our perspective smoothly in daily lives. Second one is uh, protecting sense of value. Like, I think it is similar, similar, cons similar positive points each other. So next, let's move on to the next topic. What is the negative aspects of multiculturalism? Is there anyone else who has an idea? How about Bob? Uh, <laughs> Korean, some Koreans have has a dog. Dog? Yeah, but they, they don't understand the they don't understand the disgusting food. Mm -hmm. so oh, dog oh, meat. Dog meat. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. so yeah. Yeah. still disgust. Oh. Mm -hmm. I didn't get that point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 I didn't know that. Okay. I can ask one for you. Yeah. Okay. So if people are are still in their own cultures it may be harder for them to become more Canadian in their outlook. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in their family life, perhaps they're treating their wives yes. with less equality. They're very, very strict with their children. They don't understand the Canadian mm -hmm. way sure. of equality in the family. Mm -hmm. So it's harder for that to happen. Possibly. 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 Yes. I think I totally agree with you. Hard, sorry, hard idea. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, what is the negative aspect? Poor real citizens. For example, in Canada. Can you distinguish poor real citizens in Canada? Maybe not. I know, of course, original people might, might insist, oh, I'm Canadian. Yeah, it's true. But for example, uh, immigrants who are India or Chinese or Korean Japanese came from here and then get a citizenship. It become uh, they become uh, they will become uh, or of course Canadian, but their background was Korea or Japan, Chinese, India, all over the world. So they are they are not original Canadian, but they they can insist they can. They can say I'm Canadian. So just I want to say who are real Canadian, who are real citizens. So secondly, losing a sense of tradition. Have you ever seen tradition of Canada? Might be Putin. <laughs> Might be Putin. Yes. Do you have like tradition? I was born here. Oh, yeah. and, mm, but my family traditions are still from our culture. Oh, yeah. Our own culture, and that now goes back two generations mm. to my grandparents mm -hmm. who were immigrants. So, but our traditions are still with our grandparents. So, mm -hmm. it depends on culture. I think it depends. It depends on, on the culture. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if I were to think about the real citizens and the yeah. culture, uh, traditions of Canada, I'd have to go back to the first people, who were mm -hmm. the, the native people. Yeah, original people. Those would be to me the, yeah, first, yeah. the first people. So, okay, we have no time to look, <laughs> <laughs> look over the history. So, next one. What should the government do if they 
want to have this policy. What do you think about this? What kind of support the government should do? They have to make standard to in order to accept mm. their mm. cultures. I think it is a good opinion. Mm. Yes. Anyone else? I think also government needed to teach children that we needed to respect other ethnicities and cultures. Because oh, you right. maybe you may discriminate other ethnicities. Mm. It, it could be. I mean, so yes. Okay. Thank you for answering. But it is the third point in my <coughs> in my this point. Firstly, of course, they have to support immigrants and refugees. Say for example, like for example, a strictly specific law which which can protect against the uh, sorry against discrimination. Secondly, set up lessons to learn local language for free. For example, Canada has two languages like French and English, so we can learn about. English and French in like church and then <coughs> in the organization. Third, uh, expand translation service. The fourth, I want to more focus on. I want to focus more on uh, this point. They have to recognize qualifications of immigrants activity. Oh, I think it sounds really difficult. So, easily speaking. For example, uh, people from people from uh, people came from India who who are immigrants and who has, uh, for example, a medical license like doctor mm -hmm. license. But in Canada, government don't want to admit this qualification. That's why they can't get a job same level the same level as their own country. It means it's possible for them to uh, for them to get a job of taxi driver. Maybe, uh, for example, when we get a, uh, get on a uh, like taxi or bus, I think there are you know not not Caucasian like Indian people or like immigrants. Even though they have they are so intelligent, but the government can't recognize, can't recognize their rights and their position. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Next one is protect each ethnicity. Yeah, as Chloe said and Adam said. <laughs> Firstly, uh, they have to help them to keep their own language and culture. Mm. Also, secondly, uh, government encourage them to join and participate in many festivals. Mm. Have we ever experienced to go to like kind of festivals? Maybe yes. It's because they get a chance to introduce their own culture, like food, tradition, everything. And the government uh, try to acknowledge, admit their <coughs> their language and then their culture. So, thirdly, provide financial support for settlement. It's really important. Next one is provide education. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, as Chloe said that. So, for your understanding, Please take a look at this video.
was watching this video. Then, <coughs> briefly speaking, honestly speaking, what is education in Canada, especially Canada? For your understanding, I'll show you the example as Canada. Kumi, can you read that? Okay. Broadcasts, TV, and radio programs using a lot of languages. Yes, thank you. Please read this. Each Thank you. Mm. Could you understand what I want to say? Okay, let, let's explain that. <coughs> uh, firstly, the small children can know why the TV has a lot of languages. TV and the radio, a lot of languages. I think small children have a question here. Then, next step is teachers teach what is multiculturalism from elementary school to high school and why uh, why discrimination is wrong why do we have to have concept of multiculturalism then <clears throat> also for teenagers they can learn about what is uh, racism or sexualism everything of discrimination and finally, uh, they could understand. They could be uh, understand, understood. Help student. Uh, multiculturalism helps students. <coughs> why? <coughs> why multiculturalism can help people and can help immigrants. So, did you remember? Three points, three main points of <laughs> three main points of multiculturalism. <coughs> yes. Support. Yes. Education. Education. P. Protect. Yes, it is. Firstly, support immigrants and refugees. Secondly, protect ethnicities. Thirdly, education. Mm. Today, just memorize these three points. These three points. It's really important to learn about multiculturalism. Okay. So let's move on to next topic. Do you know where I did it? German. <laughs> How did you know that? <laughs> I, I, I can see. Oh, you can see? Really? Yes, it is. Germany. So I have one question. Who are they? <laughs> They're Muslim, right? But they are. Uh, they have settled down in Germany as an immigrant. But nowadays, German and Turkish people have been have a conflict with each other. Even though Germany has had a policy of multiculturalism since the 1960s to support immigrants from Turkey. Why? So today. I've already prepared an article, so please uh, understand it briefly and easily. Yes, okay. from this sentence. Oh. Just one 
Holography is okay. Um, article about Germany. One in five people living in Germany now comes from an immigrant background. This shows that the immigrant community grew by more than 1.3% last year at a time when the overall population is falling. Thank you. Go ahead. Please continue. <laughs> <laughs> There is some evidence the, that the most uh, recent rise in migration has been caused by eco economic refugees from, uh, from southern Europe, European countries as a result of the Euro crisis. crisis, crisis, crisis. Yeah, thank you. Edwin? But the debate habitually refers back to the, back to the integration of the Turkish, Turkish community which represents the highest number of immigrants in Europe's, Europe's biggest economy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Some experts of this survey say integration is already happening in the economy. You can see the integration is happening through local in initiative. Yeah. And even for fiery organization bring a person to living together in a diverse society. Thank you. Please continue. Give me. Um, however, the enforcement will not be collected on national level and pollution still has a long way to go. Thank you. Oh, please. Bring yeah. the eventually. Yeah. Eventually doing something from habit and unable to stop doing it. Integration, the combi the combining of two or more things so that they work together. Diverse or diverse? Uh, diverse. Diverse. So it is diverse. diverse. What is diverse? It means that. Oh, no, I don't care. Oh, How can, can I pronounce it? Oh, diverse. Diverse. Yeah. Diverse. Diverse. But diverse. Very different from each other. Thank you for speaking out. <laughs> Yes, could you understand this article also? Mm -hmm. Are you following me? If you have uh, any questions, please let me know. No one has a question. Mm -hmm. It's good, don't worry. I'll, I'll you know, break it down after that, so. Okay. Please concentrate on me. Ah. Uh, the article shows fact, firstly fact, that Turkish have various communities. As you can see, one in five people living in Germany now comes from an immigrant background. I think so huge amount. Right? Ah, sorry, I forgot to tell you about it. Uh, I've already put underline, but it is really important point. So before listening to my story, please take a look at this. conflict in conflicts in German German society is because Germans don't want to admit Turkish people. Also Turkish people believe being persecuted. It means being bullied. Like um, I think Turkish people always think oh German dislike dislike us. So it is kind of contradiction to build up multiculturalism society. But of course, Prime Minister of Merkel, in uh, who is uh, who is in German, has to make up for this situation, right? 
then as a compensate. Prime Minister want to say, let's cooperate. But there is no idea for her. So nowadays, young people has been reach out. Reach out means close to uh, the Turkish people to get rid of this war and conflict each other. Then, as you can see, uh, like civil, as you can see, civil society organization putting effort to into living together in a diverse, a diverse society. But there is no, there is no solution now. But we have to keep, keep it our mind. In this case, young people try to make a solution now. So please, <coughs> please remember it. Also, I think in 10 years, uh, it's going to be changed, changed something. So if you look at website, website or newspaper or radio, maybe you will see the progress in Germany. So, next one. Do you know what assimilation is? Answer. Yes. It is similarity. Let me explain that. Do you know where it is? Tokyo. Yes. Shibuya. Shibuya. Yes. <laughs> yes. Shibuya. Shibuya. <laughs> but as you can see, also. I can see just Japanese. Yeah. Oh, I can see some Koreans. Oh, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> maybe one yeah. might be. But, okay. Uh, let's make an image in front of uh, Eaton Center. Eaton Center. Yeah. There are a lot of nationalities, backgrounds, and then like talking to someone, like hang out with a friend. But in this case, you know, we can't see any situation We're just working. But anyway, it is, a, as, it is a, as a result of assimilation. So what is assimilation? For your understanding, I'll put positive aspect and negative point. Firstly, positive aspects. We can have common perspective. Like Korean and Japan is so similar, I think. And then you can, you can feel comfortable when you talk to your friend who came from Korea and Japan first. It's because we have common perspective, common idea, common Mm, common comments or something like that. Next one, we can be proud of our country. It's because uh, usually immigrants come to one country and then they also they have to keep their society better. It means we have to cooperate with them. Also, we have to feel uncomfortable and then <coughs> We like uh, we have to join a lot of festivals, but for example, Canada, uh, for example, Japan and Korea. I think uh, we can believe way of Japan and Korea. Could you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe not. <laughs> okay. Uh, and. Proud of country, yes. Well, even yeah. even for the United States, right? Um, yes. From the uh, immigrant perspective, yeah. Um, well, well, in the United States, they are actually proud of their own country, mm -hmm. own nation, yeah. which is the states, right? So even if I, even like 
uh, I meet Korean immigrants, they're living in America, they're really proud of America. Mm. But like compared to um, compared to the, the immigrants in, in the States, right, when I meet Korean immigrants, they don't, they don't really feel like that patriotic <laughs> about uh, their own country, which is Canada, mm. right, even, even though they, they acquire citizenship, right, in, nice. in Canada. So, um, is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Right? Yeah, that's, exactly. that's definitely something that's, <laughs> that's um, not very good about multiculturalism and very good about uh, assimilation. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you for <laughs> compensation. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. So, as you can see, what is emotional and language problems for immigrants? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever felt homesickness since you came here? Yes. Why did you feel this you know, homesickness, stress? Because there are you know, a lot of Koreans, and then there are a lot of towns, Korean town, for example. Different culture, different language, and family, and Korean food. Yeah, we are Oh, and then when I when I'm speaking English with natives, I feel really lonely because I don't really understand Canadian stuff. Like when they are talking about Canadian stuff, I have no idea. Like even though I speak English, what's going on here? I can't get it. It's mm. really hard. Mm. I feel like I'm isolated from them. Mm. So yeah. Isolated. Mm. Yes. It's a point. Even yes. though we are together. Mm. Mm. Good point. Thank you. How about you? No, I've never thanked <laughs> <laughs> you. Know, it is Japanese. <laughs> I, can, I can feel your you know, feelings of How about you? Um, I miss my home. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And I miss my family. And here, it is hard to make real friends. Mm. Oh, yeah. She has a yeah. very great point. Yeah. How about you? Have you ever felt? Yeah. <laughs> Not now. Not now. Yeah. It's because I think language problem. We have no English enough English skill to live in and to go drinking with a Canadian friend or others. So as you said, firstly we felt homesickness. It's because they have no uh, enough language skill. And then, of course, we feel stressful. We can be stressful. Then, uh, <coughs> even though they are so open-minded, they are so open-minded and positive, they have positive mind, but they can't join the big community. As I said, like Korea and Japan, of China or USA. And then, as Chloe said, it can be isolation. It is the, uh, what I want to say is that it is emotional and language problems for immigrants. So, oh. do you know where it is? Beijing? Yeah, Beijing, China. Have you ever seen this photograph? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know the name. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is Tian, Tianmen, Tianmen Square. Can you read kanji? Uh, Chinese letter? Shoot. Phew. Okay. Oh. Chun Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Almost three weeks 
weeks ago, almost three weeks ago, uh, three of small ethnic, uh, uh, small three of people who are in small ethnic committed suicide and then attacked this Tiananmen Square. Why? It's because they wanted to insist their rights and their, uh, they wanted to keep their society to, uh, and then they wanted to uh, give a comment to Chinese government. I think we, you have a question mark, right? So let me explain that. It's uh, that small edix is uh, located in north of China. But there is a huge area, right? It's not small edix any, anymore. They are, do you know Uyghur? Uyghur? Uyghur. Okay. Yes. Uyghur. It is a small ethics, ethnics in China. Also, but they believe Muslim. Also, it is Chinese letter. Also, English. It is Uyghur language. Mm -hmm. Can you read that? Mm -hmm. Maybe no. I think it's similar to Mongolian. As you can see, there are a lot of difference between China and these small ethnics, ethnic. So, what is the situation in, in China now? Of course, China tries to assimilate them because it is part of China, of course. Then, Secondly, force will to follow policy, like using same language as China. Then, uh, also, they have to uh, believe Buddhism. So, and then, uh, moreover, Uyghur people insist their rights and demand to keep own Islamic culture. Let me summarize that. Chinese government doesn't want to doesn't want separation to prevent small ethnic groups for resisting Chinese policies. Yes. But it calls China ethnic crazy. It means killing and it disappearing. But it is a realistic, uh, a realistic assimilation. But why Chinese government don't want to separate them? It is a point. There are a lot of natural resources in Uyghur area. It means Uyghur is based on Chinese industry and society. Also, we can't ignore this situation, but we have to respect for policy of China. It's uh, when uh, no matter what, no matter what, they have they have assimilated policy. So, finally, I will do summarize a summary. Firstly possible to destroy culture, like China. Secondary, prevents separation, like China. Thirdly, suppression. In total, it's gonna be assimilation. So, please share our opinions. My question is, which approach, approach means multiculturalism or assimilation, can make a peaceful society? But let me suggest condition. condition. 
you should consider original people who have settled down for a long time. So I'll pair you up. Please. Please do it together. Please do it together. Please. Thank you. Yeah. Three of us. Only five minutes. Forty-five minutes? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Just five minutes to <laughs> think about that. <laughs>
Hawaii of Peaceful Society. Okay, just two minutes left. So let's conclude your opinion. So, government, law, education, but global. Global. There has to be all Native people have to come together to speak to the global countries and say, we need to be treated like people, fairly. So maybe there needs to be global understanding of how to treat Aboriginal people. Maybe it needs to be the same in all countries. So all people in, in Korea are Aboriginal. You are all Native people, Native to, Native to Korea. Same in Japan. So that be a different situation for them. So now I correct you, but yeah. Even 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 in Mexico, there are both the Spanish who were conquerors and the Native people. Oh. 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 So, and the Indians are still treated like poor, stupid people. They don't have the rights, they don't have the education, they're always. Uh, it's all wrong. So, how do you change it? Like and <laughs> citizens? Yeah, citizens? I don't know. I don't know. Citizens is the is citizens the right word? Sorry. Teacher. Is citizens the right word? Yeah. So if we're talking about natives <laughs> and citizens. And citizens oh. of countries. Natives of a country and citizens of a country. Oh. You have to tell us. Okay, citizens. Citizens. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So we need laws. So, so everybody is treated equally. Did you finish talking? Okay. Okay. Because oh, well, peaceful society can't have just peaceful society just in one country. One minute left. Okay. We have peaceful society in all countries. Otherwise, it doesn't work. It's too small. Okay. Please stop talking each other, then let's share the opinions. And I'm not the Okay. Okay. Firstly, both on the street. <laughs> what, what kind of you know, comments did you come up with in your brain? Yeah, what culture is better? <laughs> Why do we love can make, make peace for society? <laughs> <laughs> yes, love can be peaceful study. Yes, it is. Yeah, she said respect. Oh, respect. Yeah. yeah. It's a concept of yes, multiculturalism. Mm -hmm. I heard that uh, I heard that Canadians who don't like uh, immigration people. Mm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I heard that many times, but uh, I think definitely it is a good case for uh, Original people because mm. they can't experience mm. other, they can't experience various, various. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. <coughs> yes, she had a good point. Really good point. Yeah. We, yeah, we prefer assimilation. Why did you? Because our uh, assimilation doesn't mean that the people who live in assimilation country have discrimination. Mm. And also, in Korea, there, there is Chinatown. There are a lot of Chinese. They can keep their own culture. Yeah. But they choose Korea to live, right? Mm. So they have to follow Korean or like own like, yeah, yeah, culture, policy yeah. or something, policy, yeah, yes. because, because their choice. Mm. But, but then they can also uh, keep their own culture. Yes. So, I think assimilation could be society. 
translating. Mm. So you would rather assimilation than yeah. multiculturalism. Yeah. Mm. Okay, thanks. So what is your conclusion? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you staring? That's okay. You go. <laughs> I think we took it a little bit differently because we were talking about Indians who is natives and citizens. You know what I mean? Not Canadians and immigrants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we took it a little bit differently. But I, by the way, so we came to conclusion that we needed to we needed to set uh, make a law to treat all of them uh, equally. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that's equally. all. Yeah, it's your book, right? Okay. Let me let me come up with my conclusion. Please take a look at that. It is fact. Immigrants might steal opportunities from original people. Looking for a job. Yeah, of course, as Kumi said, respect for each other is really significant policy in multiculturalism. Also prevent you know people from dis discrimination. Yes. Also Erwin said, yeah, the wa following one way is you know can make peaceful society. Then government has to focus on supporting immigrants to do job hunting, looking for a job, and living in the country. It means citizens in Canada have to pay extra tax <coughs> without medical system. Like, for example, Canada, 30% of task we have to pay when we have dinner or lunch. We buy like, something in grocery stores. But that tax include supporting immigrants. <coughs> so, uh, in my lecture, there is no answer, of course, because it is culture. <laughs> we, can't, we can't take an action. But just keep it in your mind, is because Canada has multiculturalism. And then we should be more open-minded. So just <coughs> uh, what I want to say is that, uh, please, at least while you're staying in Canada, we should know the culture of Canada. Thank you for coming today. Thank <laughs> you.